Hi. I hope that you're doing okay. Today, I wanted to show you all of my houseplants. I have seven to show you. So, let's just get started with the first one. The first plant I have to show you is actually the first plant that I ever had. And this is a common snake plant. It's also known as a Dracaena trifasciata. And it used to be a Sansevieria trifasciata. So, this plant is pretty easy to take care of. And it's very resilient. Which is nice for most people. It doesn't have to be watered too often. If you sort of neglect it, it doesn't seem to mind. Mine has this brown spot here on the edge of one leaf and I don't really know what caused that but because of its resiliency I'm not that worried about it. This one I just got at the grocery store and there are some cool variations of this plant, but I think the common one is still really pretty. It has these different colors of green on the leaves with a lighter green edge. I think the colors go well together. The leaves are really thick and feel substantial. I think because of that, the leaves do benefit from a dusting every once in a while. The dust can kind of collect on them. grows is kind of from the inside a little bit because I have a little bit of growth in one area. So right in the center there, there is a little tiny leaf that's growing very slowly, but probably very steadily. For all of my plants, I've only had them since the fall or winter, I think. And this is the first real growing season that I've had with them. So, with all of these plants, I'll show you if I see any new growth because that's always one of the most exciting things about owning and caring for plants, seeing them thrive. So, 
So, that's the very first plant. And we'll move on to the second. The next plant is my largest plant, and it's a CZ plant, also known as Zamia coccus, Zamia folia. This is another pretty common and very easy to take care of plant. Doesn't need to be watered very frequently. I usually water this plant and my snake plant at the same time which is usually once every two weeks. The leaves on this plant are pretty thick and very waxy. When the light hits them, they're really shiny. another plant where I feel like I have to dust the leaves every so often to keep it looking nice and healthy. But it also is a plant that can take a little bit of neglect miss a watering or two. This is definitely one of my favorite plants. Maybe because it is so large that it does make a bit of a statement. And the leaves are so shiny that it adds a lot of life to whatever room it's in. Something that I find really exciting about this plant is watching the new growth. So I'll show you growth that I've seen recently. These bright green leaves are all brand new, and they're a little bit more delicate and thinner than these mature leaves. And usually the new growth is light green, from what I've read. As the plant matures, the leaves will turn this deeper green. But these are just some baby leaves that have just opened up recently. And right next to it, you can see that these leaves are about to reveal themselves and open up right next to that. I've been a little bit surprised at how quickly these leaves have unfurled. I thought it would be a long, drawn-out process, but every single day, a little bit of progress 
and it's so exciting to watch. I'll show you up close if I can. You can see they're all coiled up and day by day they'll reveal themselves and I think this one will be a lot thicker than the one that has just opened up next to it so I'm really looking forward to seeing what it looks like So that is my ZZ plant, and we'll move on to the next one. My next plant is a Croton Gold. Dust or Codiaeum variegatum, and I guess it's called gold dust because it has these speckles of yellow all over its leaves. The leaves on this plant are paper thin and it likes a bit more water than some of my other plants This plant did go through a little bit of underwatering and I've had to kind of nurse it back to health. It did lose quite a few leaves, but I think it stopped losing leaves at this point. And there is some new growth at the top. Just some smaller leaves coming in from the top. Taking care of a plant can definitely have its ups and downs. Sometimes a plant might not be doing so well and you have no idea why which can be a little bit stressful and a little bit worrying but sometimes you're able to fix the problem and I think that kind of experience can really teach you about perseverance in a really insignificant way, I guess, because sometimes you'll try your best to take care of a plant and the plant will die anyway, but at the end of the day, just a plant. So either way, you're learning some kind of lesson, at least in my opinion. This plant in particular will get very droopy leaves when it needs to be watered. And even right now, I just watered it today, but the leaves aren't as upright as they 
used to be a couple of months ago. But I mean, things change and maybe this is the way that it's supposed to be. I really don't know. Looking forward to seeing how much this will grow in the next few months because I've already seen a good amount of growth in a short amount of time. These newer leaves are so smooth and soft, whereas these older leaves. A little bit dusty, a little bit rougher. This is a really common plant. golden one is the most common. And mine looks mostly green. There's like a little bit of gold on this leaf, but I'm not entirely sure what gives more of that golden color. I would think it would be more light, because usually more light results in more variegation. So I would think that it would be the same with the colors on this plant. I guess as far as new growth goes, here's a leaf that starting to open. This is a leaf that's almost all the way open. It's still curved in a little bit, but that'll open up pretty soon. It's really fun to look at where some of the growth is coming from. The 
this is another one of my favorites because the growth is so satisfying to watch and I think it's nice that this plant is so common because if anything happens to it it would be pretty easy to find another one even though I know that online sometimes the rare plants are the ones that are the most coveted but I think if anything that adds a little bit of pressure to keep it alive <laughs> but I mean this type of plant is so easy to keep alive that I'll probably have this one forever and I know that when the vines get too long it's really easy to propagate and create new plants be another little fun adventure. My next plant is a parallel peperomia or peperomia tetragona. Some people say that these leaves sort of feel like cardboard and I can definitely understand that feeling. They do feel kind of thick but definitely not as thick as my snake plant or CZ plant. I think the design on these leaves is so cool. It's really interesting that this sort of symmetrical design on each leaf. I mean, I guess it's not exactly symmetrical, but somewhat symmetrical design is just found in nature. I guess because it's found in nature, it's not exactly symmetrical. There's definitely a natural feeling to it. This plant doesn't need to be watered that often, but I pretty much water all of my plants besides my snake plant and ZZ plant once a week and that seems to be okay although if I feel like a plant needs a little bit more water then I'll just go ahead and water it I usually either feel the soil or have one of those uh, 
on moisture meters for plants. And I always find that it's better to underwater than overwater my plants. So for this plant, as far as new growth goes, the new growth comes out of each sort of group of leaves. And they're some new leaves there that are pretty dark and really small. They're just opening up. These ones are a little bit further along, but they're very curved in, so hopefully they'll open up in their own time and be nice and strong and healthy. And there are a couple more down here so tiny and so cute. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to seeing all of those open up and be full grown leaves. Just like these. And my last two plants are these two baby rubber plants, or Peperomia obtusifolia. And one is a variegated version. sure, but I honestly don't mind because it's so beautiful that I don't mind if it just stays the way it is. Variegated plants are so cool to look at because they really do look like they've been watercolored someone has gone in and just done little brush strokes on each and every leaf. And then this green one is such a beautiful color. This one I have seen a little bit of growth on. So these little leaves come out from the top. Some of these leaves on the top are really 
really new even though they don't look that new that's probably the one that looks the most new <laughs> but they've kind of grown right into the plant they look like they've always been there I also have seen a little bit of growth from underneath which is really exciting and kind of like a hidden surprise <laughs> These are such cute little plants that are a little bit unique to what I have just because they are so compact this video and I'll see you in my next one